people who have seen something they could never explain. What was the thing? Story 1. Shortly after my mother passed away, I was going through and organizing her belongings in her room. I was talking out loud as if I were talking to her. There were some boxes with family photo albums I'd been looking for that I hadn't been able to find, and it was really worrying me. I was sitting on the floor and said aloud, Where did you leave those albums, Mom? Very slowly, her closet door opened on its own. A slow, creaking movement from nearly totally closed to halfway open. I was as terrified as I'd ever been in my life. I froze and didn't move, but I looked at exactly eye level, and there was a cardboard box labeled Albums in my mother's handwriting on the lower shelf of the closet. I am not a religious or even spiritual person, and I thought that there might be some imbalance in the hanging of the closet door. I went back to the door many times and tested it by wiggling it back and forth and leaving it in different positions, but it's never moved that way since. Story 2. Not me, but my dad. When I was younger, my biological mom and her husband kidnapped me and took off to another state. My dad said that he was finally starting to accept that he may never see me again after nearly a year of searching, and then one day when he was on a walk, this little girl came up to him and asked, Are you looking for a little girl? He looked at her confused and she just turned around and pointed up the block at a group of kids playing, and said, She's right there. He walked closer, past the girl, to try to get a better look and saw me in the group. He turned around to figure out what the little girl's deal was, and she was just gone, without a trace. Turns out my bio mom and her husband had come back to visit family for whatever reason. I used to call BS because the story is just so insane, but throughout the years, it's the one story of my dad's that never changed not one detail. He's told it so many times that I can recite it word for word, and he's always so awestruck when he tells it, like I can almost see him racking his brain, searching for the most logical explanation. I was two, three when it happened, and I'm now 26. He still can't piece it all together to this day. Story three. When I was 19 or 20 and first living on my own, I woke up in the middle of the night once to a pitch black room, but realized I could see as if everything in my room was subtly outlined in a reddish glow. I closed my eyes and could still see the exact same thing. I then covered my eyes with my hands, but could still see. I even got up and tested it by walking around my house with my eyes closed, and was able to navigate around all obstacles, and even see things like cups on the counters and was able to pick them up without missing them. After a little bit of this, I turned on the light to confirm everything was where it was, and when I turned the lights back off, the effect was gone. Overall, it lasted about ten minutes and has never happened again. My best guess is that I was still half-dreaming and my brain was just able to very accurately represent my memory of where everything was. But even if that's the case, I'm very impressed with my brain's half-asleep ability to form a full 3D representation of my environment as I'm moving and manipulating small objects. Either that, or I discovered a latent superpower. Story 4 I fly helicopters for a living. I was working on a power line one year and was going back to our landing zone and noticed an opening in the trees that appeared to be a leg. I came back and tried to get as low as I could into the clearing, thinking it was a person. It was a full-grown cow that had been completely skinned. There were no farms around and the animal didn't appear to be cut up in any way. I went back to the landing zone, picked up one of my ground crew members, and flew back with him just so he could verify that I wasn't crazy. The flight back, we were both kind of in awe because we have no idea how that animal got to where it's at, even more so that it had no skin on its entire body. It looked like a perfect cow sand skin. Story 5. When I was four, I got lost in my great aunt's house. I used a bathroom I didn't normally use, and when I exited the hallway that led to the rest of her house was a dead end. I wandered around between the two rooms I could get to and the hallway for what felt like several minutes. Eventually, when I exited one of the rooms, the hallway was back open to the rest of her house. It was over 30 years ago, so while I'm not certain, I can't imagine I didn't shout for help. I have no idea what caused this, whether I imagined it, it was a dream, a false memory, etc. But I have thought about it a lot through the years, and it always felt incredibly real. Story 6. In my old townhouse, the bedrooms had L-shaped door handles, I lived alone, and it was a two-story townhouse with the bedrooms upstairs. Had multiple nights where I'd be lying in bed watching YouTube videos on my iPad when my door handle would twist and the door would slowly open. 
The first time, I thought someone broke in. Each subsequent time, I'd go through the townhouse, and no one was there. The hallway light, which was also the stair light, had a switch at the bottom of the stairs and top that controlled the same light. Multiple times while in bed, the light would turn on, so I'd get up, do a search of the entire townhouse. Nothing there. Then the TV would turn on in the living room at some point, and I'd wake up and walk downstairs to the TV being on. This went on for months, and I eventually moved. Nothing like this occurs in my current apartment, but could never explain what was happening. Story 7. I think I was 14 at the time, living in a nice part of a very busy city. I woke up, had breakfast, and waited for my parents to come downstairs. They didn't come. I looked for them, but couldn't find them. Couldn't find my sisters either. I went outside, and there was no one. Literally zero people in an incredibly busy area on a weekend. I panicked fully. I looked everywhere for people, but they just weren't there. I fully freaked out, thinking everyone disappeared. I even checked if there was something on TV about. There was live TV with people, so I calmed down a bit. Other people still existed. I think it was around afternoon when I stopped looking around and walked home. When I got home, my parents and sister were luckily there. They insisted they were in and around the house all day, and I even saw them at breakfast. I broke down crying because it was simply not true. To this day, I swear, people disappeared for half a day. After my breakdown, we went for ice cream and my city was busy again, hundreds of people doing their thing. I have no clue what the F happened, but I feel gaslighted by life. Story 8. When I was 18 years old, I was driving home from a friend's house with another friend. We were on the highway doing about 110 kilometers per hour, 70 miles per hour, and made this trip often. It's a big highway between two towns, so just fields on either side. Something on two legs ran alongside my car. I saw it in the rearview mirror and out my side window. It was not a kangaroo. It was human-like, had long arms, and obviously extremely fast. My friend saw it too, and then it just went off the road back into the grass. Neither of us could explain it. My friend told me about something like that, but it was really unnervingly slow. Said he was out riding his ATV in the mountains with his dad one night, when all of the sudden his ATV just came to a sudden halt, for no reason. He was looking down trying to figure out what was going on when something out of the corner of his eye got his attention, and when he looked up, there was something like a tall, he said it had to be at least 6'3", lanky coyote with disgusting long arms, walking slowly across the path in front of him, twitching its head in random directions and breathing heavy. He told me that it never once looked in his direction while it was walking, despite its bright headlights beaming at it and its head twitching everywhere. It just kept awkwardly dragging itself across the road until it reached some brush on the other side and it slowly knelt down and disappeared. He's not really a bullcrapper, so I know he wasn't just making up things to spook people. He, to this day, still says it's the single scariest thing he's ever seen. Story 9. I, 13 at the time, was about to go to bed. I was brushing my teeth in front of my bedroom window, staring into the dark, when I suddenly heard someone screaming outside. I stopped brushing so I could hear it better. Someone was screaming out my name. I sort of froze and kept listening. More voices joined, all screaming my name and laughing loudly. It was kind of like an audience at a sports game. It went on for about five minutes. When it stopped, I, in shock, went downstairs to my parents to ask them if they'd heard anything. It was impossible not to hear, as it was very loud. They had not heard anything. I assume it was some sort of a hallucination. Still feel weird when I'm alone in my room late at night. Story 10. My mom passed away in February 2021 in Missouri. I live in Florida. I flew up there for the funeral with my husband and daughter, stayed for a couple of days to handle her belongings, and then came home. Life goes on. I grieved. About a month, maybe two. Later, I'm lying in my bed in the morning, but I'm wide awake. My phone rings and I answer it. It says mom on the caller ID. When I click it, I can hear her voice. Well, hi there. Chuckle. Did I wake you up? Now I'm just sitting there upright on my bed. All I can think to say is, Mom? And as soon as I said that, the phone clicked a couple of times and then went dead. It did show on the caller history that her phone had called mine. Either her BF or my brother kept her phone for whatever reasons, but they wouldn't have done a prank like that. I did try to call the phone back, but it went straight to her voicemail. Story 11. I was standing on the seaside walkway 
with a bunch of other people watching the sunset, a red orb came speeding down the coastline at like 50, 150 meters altitude. Didn't think much of it until it instantly stopped and seated back the way it came until it was out of sight. No noise, too low for a plane or helicopter, and wasn't a flare because it was flying fast. Stopped instantly and then flew back the way it came. Several people saw it, but this was before mobile phones with cameras were a mainstream thing. Story 12. One night, years after high school and I'd gotten married, I had a vivid and very sad dream about the first boyfriend I ever really loved. We were 15 and 16, broke up about three years later because he really got into drugs. I had this dream maybe nine years after that. I dreamed I was walking down a crowded sidewalk in some big city, and I bumped into him going the direction I just came from. He was crying and he asked me for help. I can't remember if the dream changed then or I woke up, but it was just that little snippet of seeing his face. It was so clear. I still remember how his beautiful blue eyes looked. I don't know why I waited a couple more years to call his mother and ask about him one day when I recalled that dream for some reason, but I did call her. It turns out he had died in a freak accident around the time I had that dream. He had a car in his garage that he was working on. He had climbed on the hood for some reason to do something, and he fell, broke his neck, and it was fatal. Now I'm always sad and a little creeped out every time I think of that dream. Probably always will be. Story 13. I was in Ghana, West Africa, and two people were arguing about family land or something like that. One of them removed his pants, sat down on his bare ass, and said, If I'm lying, may I be struck by lightning. And he was immediately stricken by lightning. We all started running. I guess he was lying. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever witnessed. When I came back home, I researched African occult and beliefs, but I still don't know or understand what that was. Crap still gives me nightmares. Story 14. I live outside city limits. There are very few houses near my home, and many tall bushes and trees around the house. There is a small mountain at some distance. The nights are very quiet, and there are no street lights. So after dark, the only lights are the lights from my house and the moonlight. There are two trees a little far from my house that are standing close to one another. One night, while I was outside my house with a flashlight doing something, I realized there was only one of those trees. I looked around that tree with my flashlight, but there was no sign of the other tree, like it never existed. The next day, I went there during daytime to see exactly what happened to the other tree, and they both were there just like I remembered. I looked around them and even climbed on them to see anything strange, but nothing was out of ordinary. Story 15. This incident happened to me when I was 10 years old. My friend and I were cycling. It was around 7.15, and it had gotten dark. There was a road where we usually cycled, but it was a dead end. There were bushes on one side and a wall with barbed wires. At the end of the road, there was a residential complex on the right side, and a small route led to the farms. The middle part of the road was all quiet and dark. My friend and I were just chatting and cycling when I heard a sound. I don't remember it well, but it seemed like a little girl weeping. Just as I was about to ask my friend, Hey, did you hear that? He shouted, Run! Ah! When we reached the other side of the road where the residential complex was, I asked him, What the heck, bro? What happened? He was shivering in fear and said he saw a woman in the bushes with a big white eye. When some people appeared on the road, we quickly left. We were shivering with fear, and to this day, we don't know how to explain it. Story 16 When I was about 16, I was at a sleepover land party with some kids from my school. They were more of the sporty types, sort of friends, but more so acquaintances. One of them wanted to go to the store, and I went with them. It was night, probably 9 or 10 p.m. This was in a very small town in New England, by the way. Anyway, we're driving, and this monkey cat looking creature just hops out of the woods and lands right in front of the car. We just stopped and froze, then it hopped into the other side, and this was two total hops. Things went far. We spent the rest of the night trying to figure out what animal that was. Anyone know? I was thinking about that the other day, but I never really talked to the kid in the first place and haven't seen him since high school. Story 17 I don't know how to put this but there was a period of time when I would get home from work late at night. During this time, I'd get out of my vehicle and head towards the front door, obviously. But without fail, nearly every night, I would look up at the stars without really knowing why. I would look at the moon for a long while with no thoughts in my head. 
Eventually I noticed a bright white light every night at the same spot in the sky. A bright star? Probably. A distant planet? Could be. So, during my little stargazing routine, I'd look for that bright star. One night, it was gone. And ever since then, I stopped feeling entranced by the night sky. Sometimes I miss that light in the sky, but most of the time, I don't think of it. Never did find out what it may have been. Story 18. I was seven or eight years old. My mom had put me to bed and went to my sister's room to do the same for her. I was tucked in with my head on my two pillows. Both my hands were wrapped up in the blankets because it was a cold night and we didn't have too much money to heat the home. Then, without warning, one of the pillows flew out from under my head toward the wall with an insane force, as if someone had violently pulled it out from under me. I turned over and there was nobody there. There's no way someone could have pushed it and I was facing the direction it would have been pulled from. I ran to my sister's room to hug my mom and ask her what on earth happened. She dismissed it and told me to go back to bed. Naturally, I stayed up the whole rest of the night, Lowell. I still can't work out the physics of what happened to this day. Story 19. My ex-boyfriend is a diagnosed schizophrenic, and he often told me about the things, people he saw and heard. One summer, on several late nights, he kept seeing a big dark creature in the middle of the road on the way to drop me off home. He'd stop the car in a panic and wake me up. I'd always fall asleep on the way home, and tried to get me to see this creature. I never saw anything, so I told him it was probably his schizophrenia. Well, one night I stayed awake on the drive home and I saw the damn creature in the road. It had the body of a huge bear, long horse-like legs. It didn't seem to have a neck. It was blacker than night and had a glowing white Cheshire grin. I said, what the hell is that? And my boyfriend said, see, I've been trying to tell you. We watched it cross the road and disappear in thin air. That was the last time he and I ever saw the thing. This was about 10 years ago. Story 20. I went to a friend who was a psychic. Yeah, yeah, I know. I joked about her skills with her all the time. But when my birth father passed away, I went to see her. I had not spoken much about my father, posted about him, nor had she met him. He didn't live nearby, his obituary was simple with bare details, and he did not have an online presence. What she said to me were details no one knew, and I mean details. She said phrases only he would use in anger. She said it in the same tone. It was frighteningly eerie. It made me a believer in her. She called me up one evening to speak to my husband. His mother had a message for him. I passed the phone over. I never heard the conversation, but it shook him. He didn't tell me much, but again, things no one knew. I still joke around about her skills, but respectfully. Story 21. I am eight years old. I lived in an old trailer park. The place had some serious Stranger Things vibes thinking back on it. One night I was in bed and it got really cold in my room. I got up and saw if the window was open. It was. I shut and lock it. I go back to bed. Not much later the room is cold and I get up to check the window. Open again. I slammed it in a fit of childish rage and locked it again and made sure the window was locked. I even tried lifting on it to see if it would slide open. It didn't. So victorious, I go back to bed. It's cold. Yet again, now I am pissed off. I go to the window. It's closed. My door to my bedroom slowly closes shut. I look over at the sound of it shutting, then hear something on my bed. I look over towards my bed, and there's a set of disembodied eyes floating over my bed. They weren't really giving off light, so I can't say they were glowing. But as dark as it was in my room, I still could see them. I had a tiny softball bat near my closet. I swung at them screaming, and the bat actually connected to whatever it was, and broke. They vanished, and I got a nasty splinter from the wooden bat in my hand. I yelled for mom or dad, but of course they never showed up. My dog does, though, and is scratching at my door. I let him in, and he stayed with me all night, watching the window. Story 22. When I was six, 20 years ago, my parents took me on a fishing trip with some family friends. There was a huge lake with fishing lodges that you could rent for the day, and you could catch and cook your fish there. Around 7 p.m., it was turning dark. Everyone was gathering for dinner as I was standing at the edge of the lodge, looking down at the lake shore, when I spotted a strange creature walking on the shore towards the water on all fours. It looked nothing like anything I'd ever seen before that, and up until now. It was about the size of a large German shepherd, had a long tail that was dragging along on the sand, which at first made me think of a giant platypus, obviously not a native species where I'm from, Vietnam. Its body was a bit flat, but not as flat as a turtle, 
and it walked like a mammal, not waddling like a turtle on land. On its back was a dorsal fin, and as it entered the water, the fin protruded the surface and steered like you'd normally see shark fins in the movies until it disappeared completely into the dark waters. After all these years, I still don't know what it was, even though I've been a huge animal nerd since I was four. I was the only one who saw it because everyone was preparing dinner. No one believed me either. The creature was twenty, thirty meters away from me, and it seemed unbothered by the presence of humans on a weekend trip.